I'm glad to be back. And I know we're excited for today's session. It looks like people are logging on. Thank you, everybody who's joined us. Great to see new people and regular um, attendees of the Touching Hearts and Home Senior Webinar Series. We'll give it just a few more moments, let everybody get logged on. But again, thank you all for being here today. It's exciting. We got a great speaker for you. Wow, Linda, this is a great turnout, and it's not even 12.15 yet. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Well, we like to get going on time, or as, as close to time as we can. I'm Christina Ramos, the Community Care Advocate. Thank you all for tuning in for another edition of the Touching Hearts at Home Senior Webinar Series. Today, we are going to have our Executive Director, Elizabeth Holleran, introduce our lovely speaker and presenter today. So without further ado, we'll give it over to Elizabeth. Hey everybody, it's wonderful to see you. Elizabeth Allen here, Executive Director for Touching Hearts. It's great to see all your faces again. Oh my goodness, this is taking a toll on us, not being able to get out and see each other. Today though, I'd like to introduce Linda McKenna um, with um, the Rural Senior Placement. I'm sorry, somebody caught my attention there on the corner of my eye. And my good friend, Linda McKenna. Linda is the owner uh, of um, Golden Rural Senior Placement services and she has personally placed numerous loved ones in senior home environment. In addition, Linda has spent the last 20 plus years in the home health care industry. We are very delighted to have her with us today. Linda is committed to providing personalized care and service when making assisted living decisions. Linda is a certified assisted living administrator and longstanding member of assisted living associations. She has access to many licensed senior living facilities that provide outstanding care to their residents and are, and are observed and reviewed by Florida state regulations, statutes, rules, and standards on a regular basis. Linda and Golden Rule Senior Placement, their aim is we treat our seniors as we would want to be treated ourselves. So with that, I will turn this over to Linda because I know she's got great things to tell us today. Thank you, Linda, so much, and it's all yours. Thank you. Elizabeth, I want to start by saying, and Christina, and um, Daddy Rubin as well, too. Um, this was such an honor and privilege to be selected to do this today. Um, there's certain things that you do when you own a business is to align yourselves with colleagues and professionals that have the same um, mission and passion as you do, and um, touching hearts at home at Gainesville is just that. It's the people that make up the administration and the ownership that advocates for our seniors in the best way possible. So there's no other way that I would be more appreciative than working with folks like you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. I just wanted to start by saying a little Yes, I could see it. You okay, did perfect. Just well, to make sure. Sorry. Side note from AV. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed because I'm not that technological. My son will verify that. <laughs> um, just a little bit. I don't want to go into my bio, but I want you to know the reason why I started this company, um, Golden Rule Senior Placement Services. And our name is very important to us because we do abide by that. Um, on a daily basis. And that's what's something that we have um, built a legacy on my grandparents, my parents, and now fostered with my children too. Um, we would never treat anybody any differently than we would want to be treated. Um, I was going through a difficult time in my career and I was working in sales management and home health and also in hospice. And I came to a crossroads of making a decision that I wanted to do more um, for a senior population than I was limited to working for somebody else. And during that period of time, my dear 94-year-old um, stepdad um, had a major fall. This is a very bright, I will call him young man, because that's how he thought, um, at home, uh, much to the chagrin of my daughter, who is a professional occupational therapist. Um, he had a fall at home because he didn't abide by our rules uh, as well. And um, that changed the whole landscape of his future. My dad is a brilliant man, um, a World War II veteran, a naval commander, and um, he's great at taking, given, um, <laughs> um, I don't want to say direction or um, orders, but taking them, mm, not so much. 
But upon that fall and going under surgery, the surgery was great. It was um, a hip fracture. Um, he uh, did great after that, but unfortunately, it propelled him with the uh, with dementia with um, the anesthesia that was present in his system. So we really had to think um, how we were going to have him prosper. My dad was still driving at that period of time, teaching Coast Guard classes for navigation. And more importantly than anything else, um, he was a loving soulmate to my mom. And um, he couldn't just be put anywhere. So this was a really, and I hate the word put, um, but put anywhere meaning um, he, he had to have a better environment that was conducive to him physically and mentally and honestly spiritually. So it was at that point in time on that landscape that I um, started our company because I knew the throes of what was important to him was going to be what I was going to do for my mission for everybody else that I would come into play with as a senior. So we started Golden Rule. It's going to be our third anniversary this coming November. And um, I guess our first placement was dad. And um, mom soon followed him afterwards, and she just celebrated her two years in assisted living. So um, that is the whole premise of our company is to advocate to be there in the most overwhelming time and emotional time for not only the senior, but their family. So you could do the next slide. Okay. Okay, so the topic today is Golden Rule. How does Golden Rule um, um, Placement Services uh, guide you, your senior loved one, and their families on this journey? I'm a little different than um, some other companies or geriatric care managers or um, going to an assisted living themselves and working with um, sales director. Um, my services are complementary to the family and to the senior. And I do have to say I'm very hands-on um, for the folks that are viewing it, um, not only family members and the colleagues, they know me very well. This during this time of the pandemic that not being physically able to hug, embrace, um, and be there with my clients was really something very hard on me. Um, but I am with them every step of the journey. It's from the beginning through the placement process and there afterwards. So how do we work? The next slide will tell you. We begin by discussing the four pillars of needs for your senior loved one. And what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, as we all know, that moving into a senior living community is not free. It is not paid by um, health insurance. A lot of people are under that impression. It is private pay for the most part. So what we have to have a real deep conversation with my seniors and their families is the affordability. So that's the financial aspect. That's the first pillar. Um, we do talk about what monies there are coming in each month, what they have in reserve as far as in investments, and that be also might be their home. And who are we considering? Is it just the husband or is it just the wife or is it as a couple? Because if it's just the husband, that wife that may be staying back home will have to sustain themselves. So financial is very important to have that discussion because we want to age in place and stay um, in that long, loving, warm environment till the end of life. So we don't want to transition when maybe monies are no longer available or um, then we would have to now move on to another place. Transitioning is tough at the very beginning. Imagine it doing it two or three years in and then doing it again. So that is very important. Medical is the second pillar. Uh, most people think it's the other way around, but in order to be able to be covered medically, um, you have to be able to afford um, the care that is being given. Medical is very important because we all have comorbidities or what our limitations are. And that is very in-depth that I go through is I do ask permission 
um, to speak to their primary care physicians, neurologists, psychiatrists, whoever that it may be, because when you ask a um, family member or a senior loved one, you know, what's going on with mom and dad? What are their diagnoses? It, it's very hard to ask somebody, do you have dementia? So that is important. That medical diagnosis is going to be much embraced. So we know that where we're going to be able to navigate to the, the appropriate senior living community. The next part is social. And that's where I was going with, with as far as my dad is concerned. Social is not only the activities that is fun and, you know, um, gathering. It's also stimulation. Stimulation is very important to our seniors as they age in place. It's not sitting in front of a TV all day and, you know, watching various TV shows. It is actually conversing with another uh, individual. Stimulated, um, meaning doing trivia games, um, there's pet therapy, there is so much that seniors uh, receive in a warm, loving environment in senior living. Stimulation is also ways of not having just an existence each day. Um, as I keep referring back to my dad, um, quite honest with you, because I know him best, if you would have told him three years ago that he, he would be, be playing bingo, trivia, he would say, you're crazy. Dad um, plays bingo, he wins all the time, and he wins every trivia contest because he is being stimulated on a regular basis. I get a phone call from his assisted living facility, and I brace myself, hoping that it's good news for the day, and they're like, oh, Dad won the trivia contest again. So socialization and stimulation is very important um, for everybody. Remember, as a child, um, we are stimulated from the moment that we are born. So in all honesty, why would we end that um, in our last chapter? Spiritual is the fourth pillar. I believe that we all have a higher being um, than ourselves, and we have an enriched faith um, as we progress through life. And if you're denied your spirituality, wherever that you might uh, reside, it definitely is something that should not um, be negated. Uh, spirituality is definitely an engagement in um, senior living communities. May it be by video that everybody's been doing uh, as of recently attending uh, services. Um, but there's prayer groups, there is Bible studies, um, and there is Eucharistic ministry that visits the senior living communities. So those four pillars are very much in depth that I go into conversation with our seniors, because if those are all embraced, we do have a successful placement. The next slide. As I alluded to with the financial part of it is that we're going to be able to lay age in place under on the financial aspects of it. Um, and then what happens if we're starting to run out of money or um, the wife is needing to move in now that she was residing at home? Um, we're very fortunate to have in our state um, of Florida, and I'm sure across um, the nation, is that we do have some programs that are, we can tap into. I know there is a couple of uh, elder law attorneys on view um, uh, on this uh, video. And um, what it is, what we're talking about is maybe Medicaid planning. There are certain criteria for that, but there's also um, some benefits that can be tapped into, which is, you know, stipends from the Veterans Administration. Um, and I could lead you in that direction, but I would say that who speaks best is an elder law attorney that could help you and assist you with um, those means. Remember, as we age in place, as we get older, we might need more levels of care, a higher level of care. So what is that going to encompass? It's going to encompass more, um, you know, financial um, responsibility. So that's what we have to all take in consideration as far as that financial aspect of it all. The next slide. The medical component of the, the second pillar is that a medical doctor has to do an assessment for admission in to a senior living community. May it be assisted, uh, memory care, 
in a lot of the uh, communities I work with, even independent living, they still want to have a baseline of what that resident that's moving into their community, what are they capable of doing or not capable of doing on their own. We want to encourage their independence, but we also don't want to forego giving care if they do require it. Um, the senior living community is going to be um, navigated in that direction depending what your medical needs are. There is different licenses for each facility, and I could go through them. That is, um, some of them are standalone independent uh, facilities. They are not governed by our medical associations, which is ACA, Healthcare Administration. Um, it is more uh, like a senior hotel setting. Um, the second one is uh, assisted living. An assisted living license, there is and memory care, there's um, what they call limited nursing services where they can do more care. Um, I neglected the first one, I'm sorry. Standard license is one that is, um, uh, they are uh, unfortunately refrained from doing a lot of medical things there. Unfortunately, they can't even do a blood pressure. They can't apply any dressings or anything of that nature. So that limits what they can do in the care for your, your loved one as they age in place. The second one is an LNS license, which is limited nursing service, and, uh, and an ECC, which is extra congregate care, where they can do more. Believe it or not, oxygen, and when somebody's dependent, you would not be able to be in a standard facility and be able to apply your own oxygen. So that's where you want to be more into the LNS and ECC license. I know in the Gainesville area, working with them, um, since that is the mecca of healthcare in our state, um, there is such wonderful um, communities that have all three licenses on a higher level. So we're very lucky in the Gainesville area. Um, also to consider at that point in time, do I keep my doctor? Do I keep them out in the community or her out in the community? Or do I now use the community mobile physician services? And it, you know what? I always say, why wouldn't you utilize that? Your insurance pays for it. But when there is an emergency, maybe something is going on, it's late Friday afternoon, it's very hard to get into a doctor's office, the likelihood you're going to go through ER. So why wouldn't the facility that or the community that you're living in could call the mobile physician um, services and intervene at a quick of basis? Uh, and that's where I'm a firm believer in having that and home health, the day the person moves into the community. Home health is encouraged to be used as another level of care provided, another set of eyes into that community where they can provide physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, and might be speech therapy, um, and then also have a nurse there as well too. Realize when you're walking into another community that you're so used to living in a home for 30 years, you're going to be navigating differently than you were at home when you had that comfort level at home. So home health is important, but it's also a consideration to um, have a mobile physician service. The next slide. Socialization, as I had said, um, you want to have a variety of activities. You do not want to watch a movie every day, same TV show, especially lately, who wants to sit in front of the TV and see what's going on. It's quite depressing for us seniors having to go through this with the pandemic um, and all the difficulties of what we're experiencing in, uh, experiencing in our nation right now. But mental stimulation on all levels, what they're capable of doing, just because somebody is in memory care like my dad, should not be offered some stimulation and some activity each day. What might be trivial to us is going to be big for them, so um, for them to enjoy. Um, also, there's family-oriented social gatherings um, that the families are encouraged to come with their senior loved one living at the community. We had went to one right before the pandemic, and they actually had um, Paris night. It was so enjoyable. We had a crepe station. We had delicious food. And um, my mom and dad got dressed real to the nines. It was so much fun. Music, um, it, it was so enjoyable. So it's something that you can enjoy together um, and even for the holiday seasons as well too. 
Um, they offer online technology also, especially now um, what we've been experiencing with the pandemic. Um, the online technology really helped us keep engaged with or our senior loved ones living in the community. I frequently FaceTime my parents because I wasn't able to see them as well, um, as well as um, there is um, telehealth, um, but there's granny pads. There's so much technology now that the family still can be engaged with their senior loved one. So it's something you might want to look into as well. And the last slide is the spirituality. Um, it provides in-house um, spiritual services, I had mentioned before. Some communities actually will transport um, to spiritual services um, outside of their community, outside in the neighborhood. Um, and also there is um, ones that visit for Eucharistic ministry, maybe start prayer um, groups, as well as Bible studies. Okay, the next slide. Okay, so now that we have all accomplished the four um, pillars of um, placement, um, now what do we do? We're going to start tours. We're going to not call it the three-hour tour, but we're going to start touring. I am with you the whole step of the way, not only with your senior loved one, but with the family as well, too. This is the time that we're going to be able to meet the administration, uh, and we set appointments. We just don't walk in um, for the very reason because as much as their time is valuable, so is ours. We want undivided attention. So we do um, meet administration. We also meet with the staff and you know what? Fellow residents as well because you want to ask their opinion, what their experiences are. A lot of communities actually offer a delicious meal. Sometimes it's lunch, sometimes it's, it's breakfast, or even if it's something just a snack to have with a fellow resident that we can have more of a light um, uh, conversation uh, around the table. Uh, why is that important? Because now you could see a menu as well too and, and indulge in what they have to offer. The, a lot of them have wonderful chefs um, and why not? You're not going to be dining anymore, have to, you know, cook anymore, clean up, and you're going to be served. And um, that they deserve that. So we get to enjoy that along with them. But we get to experience while we're there for that tour, activities in motion. So you, can that person envision themselves doing maybe a light physical um, fitness class, or maybe it's a Bible study, maybe it's a craft. So they can actually see the other fellow residents enjoying themselves and that maybe they can participate for a little bit, but they can imagine themselves in that, in that place. Um, then we get to visit the whole community. It's not just you know, a lot of people think, oh, we're just going to go to the dining room and meet administration. No, we're actually going to go out throughout the community for all what it encompasses. Maybe the activities area, if they have a fitness, do they have a movie theater? So this way they can envision themselves not only being there, but what it has to offer. Um, and of course, you know, as we all do, um, how do you decorate a room? Um, so they usually have models set up so you can, again, envision you in, uh, in that apartment setting. So this way, you know, as far as decorating it or having a specific floor plan, you could get an idea as well too. Now, as far as tour day is concerned, I give out a clipboard um, and we um, can make notes. You're gonna make notes for it. So this way you're not gonna remember everything that day. Trust me. So you were gonna make notes and I'm gonna be really honest with you. I really limit to about three to five per, um, per day of tour. It is, it's overwhelming and it's exhausting, especially if the senior is coming along. So in all honesty, that's why I gave you that information. Of course, they're gonna provide you with their brochures and their um, marketing materials as well. But you might wanna make a specific notation of something maybe we wanna go back and ask um, again. Um, we kind of silo, I'm gonna really be honest with you again, after each place that we visit, we meet in the park a lot for a couple of minutes and I'll say on you know a level of one to five, where do you see this um, community? Um, for the very reason is because if something wasn't appropriate on first impression, it's best to move on um, to the next one so it doesn't become cumbersome for uh, details and, um, you know, personal conversation or if 
figuring out what option there is. So that's why that clipboard is really important because that's something that's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be speaking about. Um, again, um, there is no reason why we can't go back and see them again. Uh, I pride myself in being there that day because sometimes there's things that they forget to ask. Um, I will ask um, the administration, the sales director, what about this? How does this occur? Um, so this way, sometimes they're embarrassed or they don't think of what to ask for. So that is really, really important that somebody is professionally there with you, guiding you. I always propose this to many folks. When you were born, <laughs> there is so many steps that you were guided through in your um, you know, childhood all the way on. You go, to, you go to school to learn by a professional. When it comes time to graduating and going on to college, you do an in-depth study, what college is gonna be good for you? Um, and you're guided. Um, then afterwards, maybe after you graduate college or you met somebody at college, you get married. It's a planning stage, um, planning for your first home. It's not something you just do, you know, arbitrarily. Who do you use? You use a professional real estate agent because we want to make sure the school district, taxes, and things that are going to be morally important for you. When you buy your first car, you do it for a test ride, correct? You go to a professional um, uh, you know, car uh, company and you really research and you know, maybe consumer affairs and to see what options are going to be best for you. Why would you not do this for your senior loved one when it's time to, um, you know, that last chapter and, and being guided the right way? So that's what I think is very important that it's hard to do it on your own. It really is. During this period of time, there is other professionals, as I had mentioned, um, and the things that we have to consider is that senior loved one, do they envision that they are going to be here for their golden years? Now, maybe it is just appropriate for now. Is it going to be appropriate for you, mom, dad, for, you know, maybe five years from now? Their opinions are very, very important. So that is really something that we neglect to ask is to see, yes, it might be appropriate now. How do you see yourself in five years from now? Um, also, um, is the, the community pet friendly? A lot of folks forget to ask that. That is another consideration because, you know, if your pet has been with you for 10 years and now you're going to alienate your senior loved one away from their pet, that's going to be tra uh, traumatic. This is a hard transition, but take away their fur friend, uh, fur baby is going to be really hard as well, too. What accommodations and services does the community um, uh, offer? Meaning um, the amenities as we have spoke, the next you know, part of it that we have spoken to, but the services and accommodations that they um, do is maybe they congregate with other communities in the area. Uh, what other services do they render? Do they have an in-house therapy department? Do they have in-house spiritual. Those are really important things to consider because what, again, what might be appropriate for now might not be, uh, you know, uh, good for later on. Um, but even the amenities, do they have a beauty salon? Do they have a barbershop? You know, it was funny during this period of time, you know, going without haircuts for six months was tragic for us all. Um, and even for our senior loved ones living in the senior living community, when you get a haircut or you get a manicure or a pedicure, you feel great, don't you, right? And getting that little special attention. So having that um, access to a beauty salon um, in, you know, internally in the community is important. The in-house therapy, as I just mentioned, but transportation. If they're independent and they're still driving, okay. But if they're no longer <laughs> should be driving, like my dad, um, Transportation is important. How do I get to the doctor if I keep the doctor? How do I get to an activity like, um, you know, a, a group uh, fun event or even to um, my place of worship? So that's important if they offer that as well. 
And what other types of senior living options are there? Well, there is what they call residential care homes and adult family care homes. And that is a little different than that of the large aspects of uh, senior living. Adult family care homes are smaller, they're in a home. Um, they're usually anywhere from two to about eight um, residents living there, and it's more congregate living. Um, might have your own, own room, or you might be sharing it with somebody. It's a home-like setting. Um, like I said, it's in a residential community, so um, residential home, rather. So with that being said, there is other options out there as well. Next slide. Okay, remember I said you need to have professionals guiding you on this journey. Um, as I know with um, folks online now is elder law attorneys are essential. Um, we do not live in a day that we are the Waltons anymore. Um, things have to be legal, things have to be written, things have to be scripted. Um, there might be a need for a living will. We all should have living wills. Having worked for hospice, I can't tell you how many uh, patients that I worked with never had a living will. Um, so, you know, that needs to be considered living wills. You don't want the family to make choices for you. If you want to make your choice now in your sound mind is essential. Elder law attorneys specialize in elder law. You wouldn't be going to a family uh, law uh, they specialize in family, maybe divorces and all. Elder law is specifically for elders. There might be a need for a trust. Um, there's a lot of blended families today, so a trust might be really important to um, navigate to. Also, elder law attorneys, as I had mentioned, probably could assist you with the Medicaid uh, long-term care component and also the veterans aid benefits. Financial plan and CPA. Um, my dad... Uh, had all his own office in his home, um, four laptops up until he was 94 years old, filed cabinets, did his own taxes and all. And quite honest with you, he, being an honest man that he was, didn't realize there was some tax advantages for him as well. Financial planners, we want to make sure and CPAs that your financial future is secure. And um, they need to be tapped into also when you're making this journey. A real estate agent, you might have a professional real estate agent, I would say ones that specialize in seniors. Um, it's a little different, it's an extra uh, accreditation that they do have. That real estate agent might be selling your home so you'll be able to sustain yourself for a longer period of time in that senior living community. They also offer um, a lot of guidance um, in helping you um, not only procure somebody that is purchasing your home, um, but also helping with the transition as well, too. Um, as far as when it comes time to move, there are such places called move managers or downsizing company. Realize you're going from a four-room house or four-bedroom house down to one-bedroom apartment. You don't need all that furniture um, that much anymore. Why would you just donate it? Um, a lot of those are maybe antiques, um, so there is move managers that can help you, but more importantly, they could also sell those, so those items, so you could live um, much more um, uh, financially in the assisted living or senior living. Geriatric care managers. Just because that you are now living in senior living, what happens if the son and daughter, who is the POA, lives out of state? Really to be in tapped and knowing on what's going on with your mother and father, especially if they are you know, going to an, a, a doctor's appointment outside of the community, a geriatric care manager is essential. They are the communication gap um, you know, with the, the, the senior living community, with your parents, as well as you from far away. They're wonderful. Um, they really speak very well of, of your parents, but they really see things for real-time effectiveness. Okay, next slide. And guess what? After all that is done, we arrive to home sweet home. Um, as I had mentioned in the very onset of um, talking is I don't 
ever negate that I'm not there afterwards. Um, after mom and dad, whoever that it may be, the senior loved one uh, lives in that senior living, I visit, I communicate tremendously with the care staff and seeing how it's going. Um, because we might need to add in another service um, as well too. Um, and they're my family. That's the only way I could say it. I feel like I'm adopted for a little bit and that's okay. Um, it, it's a major change and a major transition. So I'm just not there. What to say, I place them and walk away. You become part of my family. And that's what I do. <laughs> Is there any questions? Thank you so much, Linda. And then um, I know we have a lot of participants on the call. We definitely want to hear from you. You can either unmute yourself or text into the chat box. Um, we'll, we'll definitely get all of your video or questions answered. Um, and Linda, I think, you know, what you do is so important and so meaningful. My grandparents out of the four, um, three of them live independently, thank God. But when my grandmother in Gainesville was diagnosed with dementia, you know, it got to a point where she was no longer um, safe in the home because she would try to leave at 3 a.m. in the morning or walk out the front door. And, you know, when our family was looking at where to put her to receive the best care, I wish we knew, you know, someone like you at Golden Rule that, that companies like this and professionals who truly care exist because um, we had to do a lot of learning and, and try to do our best to know all those questions to ask, all those things to consider and, you know, things that our family loves to eat, but, you know, picking a, a, an assisted living or a memory care unit with good food was not just important because we like eating, but because my grandmother will still eat the food. She's very picky. So that was huge for us. Um, and other things that you mentioned, you know, they're all relatable. My grandmother, her hair is her identity. So yeah, it makes her feel good and she loves going to the salon, but that's who she is. And as you mentioned with COVID, so many at her um, skilled nursing facility, they have not had their hair done. And when they look in the mirror, they don't even recognize themselves. So it's, it's just truly incredible to realize how important some of these little things are that we take for granted and what a huge you know asset the right community can make for for a senior to age in place and and do it you know successfully and thriving so thank you for sharing everything you did thank um, you it looks like we have our first question um lauren is asking linda how can we contact you thank you um thank you lauren um my website i always lead people to my website because it gives a little bit of uh, a bio of me and it, it, they could also navigate it because the families are, honestly are doing um, the navigating. Um, there is going to be a lot of um, various options. There is testimonials from um, previous clients, um, but I do video talks each week. Don't make fun of my New York accent, but I call them Tuesday talks, and it talks about every aspect um, with senior care. And um, that's on there as well, too. And then there is a form to fill out um, to get you know, me a little bit more familiar with your senior loved one. Um, the website is www.goldenrulesseniorplacement.com. There's links to my social media, and I would love you all to join me on Facebook as well, too. I do have a Facebook page um, for Golden Rule. It is, as its name, Golden Rule Senior Placement Services. And um, this week, um, needless to say, I'm working diligently um, and posting a lot of things that are going on in our senior living communities. There is so many great activities that are going on this week. I'm loving it. Um, and I give you a little bit of an idea why the, the social media is really good. There is so much um, to find on social media these days um, and seeing things in motion. And, on, on, and also, because we weren't able to do any tours, um, a lot of the communities that I have worked with have awesome um, virtual tours. So you feel like you were there at that period of time as well. So my um, website is a great point of contact. My demographics is there. 
I do not only cover our Tampa Bay or Northern area of Central Florida. I am proud to say that not only the whole state of Florida, I have national accounts that I work with that I have placed in New York, Texas, um, Colorado, Tennessee, and Hawaii. But that one, I, I didn't go visit. Um, so, but it was a lot of intricate details to make sure that that um, lovely lady was placed in the right community. And the family was so overwhelmed at that point in time, and they never heard of the community that we um, finalized with, um, was a warm, loving environment. So not only to restrict to this area, I do work nationally as well. Unfortunately, I can't visit most of them in person, but I'll do my best to guide you along the way. And Linda, you kind of touched upon the next question that Judy from Savvy Caregiver Training asked. She was wondering about um, site visits during COVID. Actually, right now, current day with everything going on, I know Brian and Eric and other friends are joining us for communities. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about how that process is, is looking right now. Um, as every Everybody that works in senior living communities, we have a weekly call with our governor, um, Department of Health, um, and also for our health care administration. We'll be getting updates every um, Thursday, it's 4.15, as to what the processes were. Um, there is a lot of opinions of the way we went about it in Florida, and I have to say, as much as um, we hear all the things outside, we actually are able to see a list of how many residents um, that are um, afflicted with um, the COVID diagnosis or, and staff. There is much rules and regulations that assisted livings need to abide by normally. Add in the pandemic, I have to say every community that I have worked with above and beyond what they uh, ever dreamed of provided for their residents. It was a secure, loving environment, um, lots of testing, not only on the resident, but or every staff or any ancillary provider that came in. And they did their best to be able to communicate with um, the families, um, FaceTime, there was so much. Um, so I have to say, there's a lot of unsung heroes that are in a senior living that you know, every day they were bounced another email from government or, you know, slapped their hands on this, but they did a phenomenal job in Florida. Considering that we are a retiree state and we have in the most population for retirees, um, guess what? We should have been a lot larger in numbers. It's because they abided by... Um, wearing masks, washing hands, taking temperatures, really um, doing fine too. So everybody, not only up in the Gainesville area, but across the state of Florida, my applause to you and no better celebration this week for assisted living for doing the job that you did to the highest degree. And they are essential. Linda, um, I know we have a lot of our friends and colleagues in the senior care community, but we also have some seniors joining us. What do you think would be the most common kind of request that maybe a senior themselves comes to you with or that the families approach you with? How do you necessarily know when it's time to start considering an assisted living community or skilled nursing facility? Great question. And it happens every um, client that I work with. Um, as I said, do you see yourself living at home um, for a long period of time? You know, does those empty rooms really bother you because no, your children are no longer there or you're missing your spouse and it's just a home now it is, or just a house now? And are you missing your friends? Are you um, missing company? Um, are you missing, oh gosh, I got to cook. Who's going to cook for one? Um, it meet, you know, having nutritious and really dietary controlled meals. Um, but more importantly than anything else is that you don't exist day to day. There's so much more to look forward to. I call it the last chapter. And you know what? It's the most full 
chapter that there is. Because all your experiences from when from birth all through all the things that you have in your memories are all encapsulated in that last chapter that you could really enjoy with dignity, respect, and great care. That's excellent. I'm just checking to see. It looks like Christine had a comment here. Linda does an amazing job of researching facilities and communities and looking at any citation, staff turnover, and community culture. So that's terrific to hear. We know we've enjoyed working with you. I'm sure many of the communities that are joining us today, Brian, Eric, Kim, they can relate that they've worked with you and you know, you you truly are passionate about what you do, and this is this is more than just a job, and these are more than just clients. Like you said, they're family, and you treat them like your own family. So. Exactly, and thank you for saying that, Christine, and thank you, Brian and Eric and Ken. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. There is so many communities out there, and it's my choice, really and truly, to work with them. Um, you know, it could be a national account, and if there's one specific facility that is in one area that I don't care to work with, I don't really engage with it. The reason why is it, it's not only that it's a reflection on me, it's not going to be a proper placement. And thank you for picking that out, Christine. It is, there is um, a lot of uh, in-depth look that I look into it. Uh, if there is deficiencies, if the staff turnover is great, that's not going to be great for your senior loved one and for yourself. Um, that is all very much um, investigated, navigated through. Um, and I'm I'm not going to recommend it. I feel that if I can't place my own mom and dad there, I am not going to recommend it to you as well. Great. That's such I, a good point. I and can attest to being on Facebook, you know, messenger with Linda and, you know, checking out just to make sure, you know, is this the right place? You know, what's going on? Have you heard anything? So it's definitely um, due diligence on Linda's part. And it's really important. Yep. And even, you know, for our caregivers that are going to go in and work with seniors, we obviously, we want to help everybody, but, you know, many times Elizabeth will get a call or I'll get asked the question, where should we place our senior? We need more support. They, they're, you know, wanting to move out of the home. And, you know, for us too, it's so important that we're referring to the top communities. And again, we have the village at Gainesville joining us today, Brookdale here in Gainesville and Hunter's Crossing here. They're all tremendous communities, um, but working with someone like Linda really does help. So we I, say, I never want to negate um, staying home and using um, private care. Um, I pride myself in only associating with companies as yourself that are licensed, bonded, and insured. That comes up in a lot of conversations with um, a lot of the seniors in the beginning. Oh, I'm just not ready, but they need some level of care. Um, I do work with only certain companies because they do have to be licensed, bonded, and insured. And the reason why I say that getting some caregiver off the street that is not insured, God forbid she or he falls in your home, um, there's a problem. They're not bonded and fingerprinted. They're in your home and there's a lot of things in the home that could be tapped into checking accounts, checkbooks, jewelry, or whatever. Um, that's a non-secure environment for somebody to, to come in that is definitely not um, bonded. But, and when I say licensed is important because a caregiver should be a, a you know, CNA or HHA, which is a home health um, uh, um, assistant, that, that means they went through scrutiny of learning of what they are doing or and helping a senior. So not having those three items, um, I would not recommend. I have to say that I reached out to um, Elizabeth because I had a very tender situation up in the villages when a senior loved one, um, and, and it was really tough times. They just lost the father and a lot of hospitalizations and mom just, you know, needed a lot more care. Um, they did decide on a, uh, a senior living community, but we did tap into um, Touching Hearts um, in the Villages area because they were, she just needed to be embraced a little bit more. So again, I will only recommend um, companies that I would use for my own and that are licensed, bonded, and insured. 
Well, we appreciate that. And that is so important. You know, we can all attest to, to that being huge, especially for our line of business. So um, Eric, Brian, Kim, I don't know if you guys want to chime in, um, but it's definitely been a great conversation about assisted living communities and senior communities. Um, from your perspective, is there something that you would wish to, to tell seniors out there who don't really know if this is the right choice for them? Hi, it's Brian from Hunters. I would just say that you know, we go the extra mile, like I'm sure um, uh, the other two communities do, to create a safe, healthy environment, to create like almost like a bubble. So they're safe, it's clean, it's... Uh, hyper clean now <laughs> uh, to make sure we don't have any rub up against with the, the virus or problems and you know, we just don't want it around and give families an option where you know care is a challenge but also care with a wholesome clean environment with good meals and, and other people that they can talk and uh, socialize with great thank you thank you Brian we got Eric here Hello, everyone. Yeah, I just want to second that. Obviously, we've all been going through challenging times, and I, I really uh, appreciate, you know, the teamwork that this community really does show here in the Gainesville area. Um, I've obviously worked with Linda quite a few times, and she's an amazing asset. Um, you know, I always love working with any uh, kind of more concierge-style uh, service uh, like she provides because it really does help us you know, work with the families because, you know, for instance, Linda educates them so much that, um, you know, when, when they come to us, you know, it, it's already a lot set in place. So uh, thank you for that. And, um, you know, I hope uh, everyone's doing well and, um, you know, let's keep uh, pushing and, and, and keeping all our seniors safe. Thank you, Eric. And Kim, I don't know if you're able to unmute or if you wanted to say anything, but... We definitely love to hear from you if, if that's of interest. And, you know, something that Touching Hearts at Home did for Assisted Living Week, um, we actually created a senior community award list of our top communities and not only Gainesville, but also Lake City. Um, so we created special awards and custom door decals. It's a giant purple heart to put on their doors and their reception windows. So, you know, seniors can feel that extra vote of confidence and their families also for communities that we know are clean and safe and healthy and the care of their seniors and residents, you know, is top priority. So Again, we just want to thank you all for all your hard work and, and all of you joining us today, not only for joining us, but for all of your work to help us all serve seniors together. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Incredible presentation.